Greetings, one and all. Greetings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, only begotten, and of His Holy Spirit, given back to us on the day of Pentecost, to those who would receive it. Greetings. Today I would like to speak to you, especially upon the Bible. And to do such a thing, I would start first with His Majesty's words upon the Bible. His Majesty says, We in Ethiopia have one of the oldest versions of the Bible. But, however old the version may be, in whatever language it might be written, the word remains one and the same. It transcends all boundaries of empires and all conception of race. It is eternal. No doubt you all remember reading in the Acts of the Apostles of how Philip baptized the Ethiopian official. He is the first Ethiopian on record to have followed Christ. And from that day onwards, the word of God has continued to grow in the hearts of Ethiopians. And I might say for myself that from early childhood, I was taught to appreciate the Bible and my love for it increases with the passage of time. All through my troubles, I have found it a cause of infinite comfort. Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Who can resist an invitation so full of compassion? Because of this personal experience in the goodness of the Bible, I was resolved that all my countrymen should also share its great blessing, and that by reading the Bible should find truth for themselves. Therefore, I caused a new translation to be made from our ancient language into the language which the old and the young understood and spoke. Today, man sees all his hope and aspirations crumbling before him. He is perplexed and knows not whither he is drifting. But he must realize that the Bible is his refuge and the rallying point for all humanity. In it, man will find the solution of his present difficulties and guidance for his future action. And unless he accepts with clear conscience, the Bible and its great message, he cannot hope for salvation. For my part, I glory in the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what his majesty said. This is from my book, David Kingdom Come. It's on Amazon. Get a copy and read the other things in there from it. You see, I start with the Bible because I'm going to show you everything now from the Bible today. It's a Bible day today. David kingdom come, it has come in Christ. You see, after the flood, when Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord, he and his three children and their wives were saved. Shem was the chosen people of God through Noah. We check it in Genesis. Chapter 9, verses 24 to 27. And Noah woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth. And he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. Good. So I want you to know who is Ham, who is Shem, and who is Japheth. Shem is a brown man. Japheth is a white man. And Ham is a black man. Occupy Africa. Uh, Schofield and his uh, dedicated students to the Bible, they said to us that... Uh, the progenitors of the ancient Cimmerians and Cimbri, from who are descended the Celtic family, they came from one of the children of Japheth. They also say that Magog are descended from the ancient Scythians or Tartars, who are descendants of predominate in the modern Russia. 
They say the progenitors of those who people Greece and Syria are from Javan. The sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshach and Tiras. This is chapter 10. Telling it, this is a Bible thing. These are the children that we populate in Yad Ham, Shem and Japheth. But Shem is the chosen one. So continuing along that line, we continue. You see, out of the Shemitic lineage of families, from Afaxad, son of Shem, was chosen Tira. He is the father of Abraham. The Lord chose him to go to Canaan and to take that land. In Genesis 11, verse 31. Genesis 11, verse 31. I'm going to read it for you. You could check it yourself. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. You see, Terah. As first called. In Genesis 12, verse 1, we see, verse 1 to 3, we see, whilst Yura died in Haran, we see, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them, curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. This is a promise from God to Abraham. Continuing. So I'm saying, if God's chosen is Shem, the brown man, then how come the official home of his children would be Ethiopia, the land of Cush, the son of Ham? The European teachers of Paul's doctrine refuse to accept this truth. Remember Genesis 9, verse 24 to 27? The Lord will enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. Therefore they extended their rule from Rome to the Byzantine Empire, on the papacy. That empire was also known as the Eastern Roman Empire. They were actually dwelling in the tents of Shem over there. This took place from 300 AD to 1453 AD. Its capital was founded by Constantinople. At Con Constantinople, by Constantine the first, the same Constantine who I'm telling you brought about this religion. Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism. It was him. Constantinople became the richest, most lavish, most important Christian city in the world. The empire was much more Greek than Roman anyway in its cultural terms. And the Lord has enlarged Japheth, but he is not to rule the world. He is to put his word worldwide to all Gentile nations, even those he explored, exploited, and discovered, so to speak, so to speak. God will enlarge Japheth materially, giving him zeal to explore and exploit new lands out of his territory. But the Almighty God of Noah is promised to come through Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant of Shem and Japheth. One of Ham's son, that is, his last son, is cursed, but his first son is exceptionally blessed. Nimrod, the son of Cush, is called a great hunter before the Lord. It is he who found the river Gihon, which encompassed the land of Ethiopia, and he gave it, that land, to his father, Cush. This land was once occupied by Adam and Eve before they sinned and had to be removed back to the place of Adam's creation which is Bethlehem of Judah, now being occupied by Canaan, 
who will have to be replaced by Adam and his descendants of Shem so that Christ can appear there. This land is chosen by God to present his son as a sacrifice for humanity's sin and present a new creation that should begin right there with the presentation of the Holy Spirit to us, new spirit of the risen Christ. Well, why? They say because Adam sins and Cain's shedding of blood, righteous blood of Abel, in God's view, made this city a sinful city that has caused man's disobedience and violence and he, God, is willing to come to this city as Christ, the Son of God, and give up his life, his blood for us all. In the book of Amos, the prophet Judah, chapter 9, verse 7, the children of Israel are likened unto the Ethiopians. Yep, yeah, they are likened unto the Ethiopians. Yes, great Amos, the prophet of Judah, he said in Amos chapter 9, verse 7, Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, said the Lord, comparing his beloved children of Israel to the Ethiopians, who at that point in time have the Ark of the Covenant. Look at verse 8. This is since 787 B.C., you know. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saying that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, said the Lord. For I, lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sight. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. God is great. He's not going to destroy Israel. The kingdom itself, the sinful kingdom, he will destroy. And he will not destroy the house of Jacob. Because if you look back, we will see what is the house of Jacob. The house of Jacob, according to what is promised by God, we will see it later, is a house of flesh, house of the bowels of King David. A house of flesh. Continuing on. The Davidic kingdom must not be sinful. Solomon knows that. Because the Lord had told Solomon that if he don't go in the way of his father David, he will destroy even his temple and he will destroy that kingdom, that throne from Judah in Jerusalem. This is the promise of God. So, Solomon knew those things. Look at um, chapter 11 of First Kings, verse 1. Chapter 11, verse 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites. This was his heir's mother, Ammonites. Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Yes, Rehoboam was a Edomite, was a Ammonite's son. The Lord knows everything. But if you look back here, when when, when um, Solomon was still walking in David's ways before he came to this, he was walking in David's ways. When he was still walking in that way, the Lord sent to him the Queen of Sheba, who came in a very respectful and honoring way. Verse 9, chapter 10. This is before chapter 11, what just happened there. When the Queen of Sheba, verse 1 says, When the Queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. Verse 9, Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore may thee be king to do judgment and justice further down now in verse 13. And King Solomon gave unto Queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked. 
beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went to her own country. She and her servants, her own country, which was promised to David that he would have his own country. We'll get to that a little further on. I'll show you. Yeah, so Queen of Sheba and her son now, they come to set the kingdom in a straight and upright way, different from the Ammonites' son, Rehoboam. So David's throne is moved from Jerusalem to Ethiopia. Those who read other books can read from the Kibra Negas and know what I'm doing. And uh, the kingdom there becomes the Hermetic, Shemetic throne of David. It was started by Menelik I and was brought to fruition by his imperial majesty in 1930 as the land of the tribe of Judah, the defender of the faith. King David's offspring. Now, why is Ethiopia so important? Because the Lord himself had shown us through the prophets that this is a sinful kingdom. And when the Lord himself came and prophesied to them, he and all, he too, was neglected and rejected by his people. That's why he made a statement and that's why anybody can come in. You see, the Lord came unto his own and his own received him not. Therefore to as many as would believe him, gave he the power to become sons of God. It's up to you and your faith, what you want to believe, how much you want to put into it. 30, 60, or 100%. All is there for you to choose from. I continue now from uh, Matthew chapter 11 and I'm going to show you that the same thing that was promised in the Old Testament God come and promise in his own person in Christ in the New Testament this is from Matthew chapter 11 verses 20 to 24 I'm going to read please have patience to understand then began he to abrade <clears throat> the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not get that clear got to repent. Woe unto Cherazim. Woe unto thee, Cherazim. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. Shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in that day of judgment than for thee. These are the things that Christ put in forward to the land of Israel before he leaves. You know? Look at verse 25. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, O Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Okay? So we give thanks for the Son of Man, is the Lord even of the Sabbath. We give thanks to the Lord for all that he has done and what he is doing. He provided a way out. And look at the, this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are pillars of the New Testament. So let us go to St. John. Verse 14. In John chapter 14, sorry, verses 1 to 4. This is Christ's words again. Same time when he came. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, 
I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also, and whither I go ye you know, and the way ye know. He also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. These are the things I want you all to understand. Ethiopia, David's throne. In Matthew 11, Jesus condemns Jerusalem where he performed many miracles and was told that uh, they don't believe in him. Scribes and the Pharisees took him to the Romans to have him crucified because he says he's the son of God. They don't believe him. They crucified him for blasphemy. Yeah. Yet when he has completed his work, the Lord God, he must go to prepare a place for us. While we are endowed with the Holy Spirit after the day of Pentecost. Through the church of Peter. I've been trying to explain that to you all, you see. And I'm trying to explain to you that this kingdom of Jerusalem must be destroyed and no king can sit there anymore. The new kingdom is in Ethiopia and it is through Menelik, through Solomon. You see, Solomon knew that the Lord was granting him a favor to build a house and to bless it in David's name with the Shekinah glory. Because you look at 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 9. I'm going to carry it to it. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 3. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 3, and then we're going to read 4 and 5. 1 Kings is right here. Chapter 9, verse 3. Here we go. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication, speaking to Moses, eh? And thou hast made, that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house, which thou hast built, to put my name there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be, perpetu shall be there perpetually. Mine eyes and mine heart. If thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my judgment, then will I, I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Okay? Furthermore, now the Lord warns him, verses 6 and 7. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, Ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for them. For my name will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. This is the promise of our Lord. Solomon knew that. He knew he had to walk in the way of David to maintain it. So when the Queen of Sheba came to him, he was still walking in that way. Later on, in the following chapter, they show us that Solomon changed his ways so the word of the Lord had to come and reveal itself unto the world that God's word is true. The things that he says he's going to do, he's going to do. And this is what happened to Solomon's kingdom in Jerusalem. Solomon's kingdom with the Ammonites, this is what happened. But Solomon's kingdom with the Ethiopian princess continues until today. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who alone is worthy of praise, Yeshua. 
Yeah, in verse 10 now, you see the princess complimenting God's choice and praising him. And this now is David's seed of his bowels, has gone back to a place that they can call their own. I'm going to come to this in a while and show you what's going on with Samuel, 2 Samuel 7. I'm going to examine it a little. And the Lord tell her thee will make thee an house. The Lord told him in verses 11 and 12 that he will make him a house. So how he will appoint a place of his own that he could call his own. He make him a house. How? He will set up David's seed which shall proceed out of his bowels. That is how he said, I will establish his kingdom. This is Haile Selassie the first. David, these things took place in Samuel. And I'm going to carry to 2 Samuel. Because it's in Samuel. 2 Samuel 7 verses 1 to 3. I'm going to read it for you right now. Very important to all what we've been doing. You see, David brought back the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem and intended to build a house for it. And it came to pass, and he was at peace. It came to pass when the king sat in his house, verse 1 of chapter 7 of 2 Samuel. Please. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth with curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord God is with thee. So I'm telling you, at this point in time, the Lord was with him. He was at peace, and all his enemies were at bay. But when he go to sleep, the Lord gave him a, a dream. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus said the Lord, Shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I was brought, that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle, and in all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, speak I one word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? Now therefore, so shall thou say unto my servant David. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I took thee from sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people Israel. And I was with thee, whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made a, thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men in the earth, that are in the earth. This is the important chapter, first chapter, verse 10. Moreover, you don't build me no house, but moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own. Very important. And move no more, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. This is what I'm saying. This place that is appointing them is Ethiopia. And they shall move no more from there. Blessed be the Lord God of you. This is in 1042 BC. Understand me. Second Samuel, 1042 BC. By, t by 992 BC, Solomon meets with the Queen of Sheba and they make this seed to build this house. And he goes back there. But more importantly, I would like to expose to you that King David fell in love with Ethiopia right after these blessings from God. I will appoint a place. And, and he goes on to say to him, And when thy days be fulfilled, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. I will set up thy seed after thee, 
which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. These things were promised to him. And David went after a man's wife, the Hittite. It was a wrong thing to do, and he paid the price. But Solomon was the son of, of that. You see, Solomon was the son of Bathsheba. Bathsheba was the wife of an Hittite named Uriah. What does Bathsheba mean? Bathsheba means of the house of Sheba, of the house of Ethiopia. Solomon's mother was an Ethiopian. This was one of the great reasons why the queen of Ethiopia came to see if this great man, this great king, had any Ethiopian in him, and why and how and what he was doing for God. And she believed in God, so she came. I'm telling you that from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1 to 3 and 10, this is what happened. So check it out yourself. The Lord made the house. And this is what the Lord has done. He made us a house. You see? David was anointed by Samuel, you know. Yeah. In, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 16. I'll just read for you because today is a Bible day for me. First chapter, First Samuel, chapter sixteen, verses thirteen and fourteen. First Samuel sixteen. Right here, I got it. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Understand what's going on? It was done. Verses seventeen and nineteen. I continue. And Saul said unto his servant, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring me to him. Eh? No, chapter 17, sorry. Verse 49. Chapter 17, next chapter. Verse 49. I just want to read a couple things for you. Verse 49. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. And the stone sunk into the forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. David was blessed by Samuel in 16 and in 17. He slays, he slays Goliath. And a little further on, when we begin 2 Samuel, we see that King Saul dies. And the man who reported to him as an Amalekite. And David slew him too for slaying the Lord's anointed. But it's from there we see that the, the promise of Samuel to David has taken its place. He shall not be removed like how Saul was. That's why we believe in Haile Selassie the first. And I want you all to understand and to search your Bibles for yourself. For your own self. And your, your faith must come from you. Yep. So at this point I want to Leave it up to you to go read and thing because there's a lot I could have read, but the time is running, so bless be the Lord God. All I'm asking of you all is just you read your Bible for yourself. You see what the emperor say, listen it back again. And I want you to live for God, the Almighty, for yourself. And wait on Christ's second advent. Because I will tell you now, one new commandment he gave us, you know, that we should love one another as he has loved us. So I can know just how much love you get from Christ by the way you're loving us. It's as easy as that. The Lord has put it in us in the new covenant that he will put it in our minds and write it in our hearts. No one can take it from us. It doesn't matter where you try it to show us. It won't make any difference because we know and it is in the Bible. Now, unless we accept with a clear conscience the Bible and his message, we cannot hope for salvation. So, I'm a Bible man. Thanks very much for your time, and I hope it leads you back to that Bible. <laughs>